Crabs can be raised in the Taklamakan Desert, but wait, what the desert lacks most is water, and the survival of crabs cannot be separated from water. So, how to breed crabs in the desert? What's more, as we all know, the Taklamakan Desert is the second largest mobile desert in the world. Why are the driest places in the world now full of lakes? Could climate change have such a big impact? This has to start a long, long time ago. The famous Darim River flows into the Darim Desert. In the past, the flow of this water was large, and the areas it flowed through formed many oases. However, in the last century, with climate change and environmental changes, the water flow of the Darim River has dropped sharply, and the lower reaches of the river have been cut off for nearly 400 kilometers. The changes in the Darim River have a great impact on the local area. The river is gone, the trees are withered, the desert has occupied the oasis, and people have to leave their homes to find a way out. In order to solve this problem, China has carried out comprehensive management of the Darim River since 2000 and transported water to the lower reaches of the river. Since 2000, after 23 ecological water transfers, the groundwater level on both sides of the lower reaches of the mainstream of the Darim River within a range of 1 km, has recovered from 8 to 12 meters to 2 to 4 meters. The water supply of the Darim River downstream also benefits Lop Nor Lop Nor is located along the Darim River. There are many small lakes around it. The water level is also rising. With the increase of the water area, Lop Nor has new vitality. This year, the precipitation in northwest China is more than in previous years, the water level of the Darim River has risen, and even some local floods have occurred. These waters flowed into the surrounding deserts and formed desert lakes, which are very beautiful. The rising water level of Lop Nor and the expansion of the water area have also made it possible to farm fish, shrimp and crabs. In 2015, the local began to cultivate crabs, because the water quality is very good, and it contains traces of salinity, which is very suitable for the survival of crabs. After the crab seedlings came here, the survival rate was as high as 98%. This year, the farm invested a total of 50,000 yuan of crab seedlings. The crab fishing will continue until October, and the crab output is expected to reach 20 tons. The crabs cultivated in Lop Nor are actually Yangtze River crabs, the hairy crabs produced here also have the characteristics of green shells and white belly, which are very delicious. In addition to cultivating crabs, the farmers also make full use of the rich water area of Lop Nor and successively introduces rich fish species. At present, all kinds of aquatic products here are sold by order online and offline. In addition to meeting the needs of local residents, they are also sold to Beijing, Shanghai, and other places. The high-quality aquatic products are welcomed by consumers across the country. This has also created more employment opportunities for the locals, and those who have left their hometowns have returned to be reunited with their loved ones. Overall, the Taklamakan Desert, known as the extreme aridity in the world, has gone from lacking water to farming hairy crabs, all of which is the result of China's efforts over the years. As the Darim River Water Transfer Project continues, perhaps in the future the desert aquatic products will be exported to the world and put on your table. Of course, in addition to the efforts of the Chinese government, there is also climate change to help. The average annual precipitation in the Taklamakan Desert is less than 100 mm, the minimum is less than 5 mm, and the average evaporation is as high as 2,500 to 3,400 mm. This extreme environmental condition is not even enough to sustain vegetation growth. Why did lakes suddenly appear? In fact, in recent years, the precipitation in the southern Xinjiang region has been increasing year by year, and the precipitation in the Darim River Basin has been significantly higher. Some scholars have used the historical climate data from 1961 to 2007 of 12 meteorological stations around the Taklamakan Desert to analyze the characteristics of climate change in the past 47 years, and found that the annual average temperature in this area is increasing, the precipitation is increasing and the annual potential evapotranspiration and surface dryness are generally decreasing. Although the soil in desert areas has poor drainage and poor water retention, in deserts, wind and rain gradually remove sand, 
dust, and other fine particles, leaving behind larger particle fragments that eventually form a layer of desert ground as hard as concrete. This type of ground has poor drainage and water retention, so it doesn't take much water to flood an area. So, can China take this opportunity to plant trees in the Taklamakan Desert? In fact, the Chinese are very good at managing deserts. Before that, the Muas Desert and the Kubuki Desert were also full of yellow sand, but now it turned into green. So, why can the Chinese transform the Muas Desert and the Kubuki Desert, but can't do anything about the Taklamakan Desert? This is actually because the formation of the Muas Desert and the Taklamakan Desert is different. The Muas Desert is mainly land desertification caused by human activities. The formation of the Taklamakan Desert is mainly due to natural factors. It is deep inland, and the water vapor from the ocean cannot reach here. In addition, the Taklamakan Desert is surrounded by mountains and intercepted the water vapor, so the precipitation here is very small. The average annual precipitation is less than 100 mm, but the average evaporation but as high as 2,500 to 3,400 mm. Under the action of drought and wind, the rocks are broken into small particles, and the long-term friction with each other turns the small particles into sand. This is the origin of the Taklamakan Desert. There are many ways to deal with man-made deserts and make them full of life again. In the face of the natural desert, the power of human beings seems so insignificant. The Taklamakan Desert is facing severe water shortage. The precipitation is so scarce that even the most drought-tolerant vegetation cannot live. It must rely on artificial watering or root systems to go deep into the ground for dozens of meters to find groundwater sources. Therefore, as for human-induced land desertification, after people plant trees, vegetation can rely on natural precipitation to survive, while for deserts formed due to natural reasons, even if artificial trees are planted, irrigation is still required in the later stage. For example, the Chinese built desert highways in the Taklamakan Desert. In order to prevent the desert highways from being eroded by quicksand, more than 70 meters wide forest belts were planted on both sides of the highways, among which there were tens of millions of excellent windproof and sand fixing plants. But the vegetation here cannot rely on natural rainfall to survive. In order to ensure their survival, the Chinese have built a well house every 10 kilometers on this 436 kilometer long green forest belt, a total of 109 well houses. People are stationed here to irrigate the trees. At present, the trees on both sides of the road are all drip irrigation. Although there is a lake in the Taklamakan Desert, it is only an accidental one. The evaporation here is large and the water cannot be retained. When the lake water disappears, it will return to a dry state. Therefore, if the Chinese take advantage of this time to plant trees, although the vegetation may survive at first, it will still die due to lack of water after a long time. Well, thanks for listening. If you have any suggestions, just leave them in the comments section. We'll come back as soon as possible and check them, and then we'll give feedback. See you next time.